1.0.5 introduced something that they did that the lag is vastly improved in war. Like, crazily improved in war. Newsy news. 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 Hey everybody, my name is OnePeg, and if you end up enjoying the content that I'm creating and you're not yet subbed to the channel, I would ask that you please consider subbing to the channel as we do this kind of stuff all the time. Now, I know I said in a prior video that I probably wouldn't be making any New World content anymore, and well, I've decided that I'm still going to make some. So, thanks to the word probably for giving me the out. There is a dev blog update that was put out yesterday that I didn't have time to address last night because I was playing the Lost Ark beta with some friends, and I want to make sure that I at least got to this because this actually addresses a whole lot of concerns and questions that I and the community have had, and even though I am overly critical of the devs, I still want them to make good on their promise and fix the game that they made and released. So, let's talk about it. In the dev blog that they put out yesterday, the community manager, Luxendra, said, Hey adventurers, since launch, the team has been working hard to gather, investigate, and address issues surfaced by our players. We know how much our players care, and we resolve to be more transparent and communicate more frequently about how we're addressing issues. Thank you. To begin, we want to provide an update on issues we believe are most critical to our community. First, character transfers. It's important to us that everyone have the opportunity to choose which server they are playing on. By the time you are reading this, character transfers will have been re-enabled, and most players should be able to move their characters. Awesome. Desperately, desperately needed. This is something that we have desperately needed for a long time. The character transfer system has been, unfortunately, full of bugs. Hopefully, these have been knocked out. Secondly, full server status. In an effort to ensure that players are actively playing characters on a server that are not competing in queue with new players, we have implemented a full server status to prevent new characters from being created. We monitor the active users on each world and ensure that full server status continues to be accurate. We understand this may mean that new players are not able to play with their established friends, and some worlds are not receiving the volume of new players that other servers may, and this can have a variety of impacts. We continue to monitor this situation and will make real-time adjustments accordingly, as well as provide 24-hour notice before a server is marked full. Places like Valhalla, Hell, even our server that we play on, which is Celadon on US West, repeatedly have had instances where they have shut down the ability for people to make new characters on the servers, but they weren't really notifying people when that was happening. Nor were they notifying people when those uh, full servers opened back up to allow for new character creation. So while this does suck for a lot of people that want to be able to create new characters on certain servers, the reality of it is that the new character creation was the thing that was causing people not to be able to get in and play because new character creation is the vast majority of queue issues. So I'm glad that they're at least providing notice to people uh, on both ends of this. Economy and deflation. We've seen a lot of feedback on the game's economy and wanted to share a recent update we posted on the forums. Touching on the current state of the economy, from a data standpoint, the economy is performing with an acceptable levels. However, the economy is tighter at the end game currently. Generated by level, it is very high in the 1 to 35 level range. Decent in the 40 to 59 and gets narrow at 60. This means that as more players get to level 60, this will start to put more pressure on the economy. Players are consistently generating a positive gold balance every day, but there is a downward trend. This trend continues and we get closer to a negative in-out, we will take action. Yeah, this is just parroting. A different dev blog that talked about how they could see it was getting tighter. Our goal isn't to drive the value to zero and make it so that no one can amass wealth. We want to ensure that overall gold balance per server stays in check. So then they were talking about how they made two large changes. Um, they fixed the Azoth staff bug, which allowed people to be able to uh, farm portals. And they also have fixed Outpost Rush, which has a gold reward at the end, which actually is kind of decent because if you participate and actually like do stuff, you get a little bit more than 300 gold, which is nice. They also want to remind everyone that there is a big gold bonus for your first three faction missions each day. This is not well communicated in the UX, so we'll work on improving that. Make sure you run three faction missions each day to help your personal gold balance. What this means is that you have to go to Shattered Mountain if you want to max out on this. The Shattered Mountain uh, faction missions give a reward of 25 gold. The first three that you do each day give a 10x bonus of 250 gold in this case, so you'd get 750 gold for doing the three faction missions. In our November major release, not a weekly patch, we have a slew of economic-focused updates and bug fixes aimed at improving the current state of the economy. General fixes. Reduce the durability loss from PvP deaths by 10%. Extended housing tax periods from 5 to 7 days without increasing taxed amount. Reduced attribute respect coin cost by 60%. Reduced the quantity of honey gained from apiaries by 50% and the amount of milk from cows by 65%. Honey trees are unaffected by this change. We made this change because the volume of milk and honey in the world is higher than our initial estimates. The bees and cows are happy about this change. 
Okay, so these are actually like really, really good changes. All trading posts will be linked finally. This is awesome. This change was made to strengthen the economy's less traveled territories and ensure item availability in all territories. Okay, so now the question is, how are the taxes going to work? Fees for buy and sell orders are defined by the settlement that you're posting them from. Transaction taxes on purchases you make are defined by the settlement in which you are making the purchase. Very cool. Items listed in sell orders that expire are returned to the settlement from which they were posted. It is no longer possible to place items on the trading post for 28 days. The maximum is now 14. That is sick. That's so good. We are amping the potency of expeditions by doing the following. Increased coin gain from expedition bosses starting at Starstone Barrows by 25% and ramping up to endgame expeditions by 100% per boss. Reduce the coin cost of each of the tuning orbs and increase the corrupted shards players earn from minor and major corrupted breaches. Also nice. Reduce the coin cost of chisels by 20 to 50% depending on tier. This is, these changes are like, this is all of the stuff we have been begging them for. I am, I am so happy that the devs are taking action. We're fixing a few bugs on repair kits, which should help crafters with a new item to sell as well as lowering repair costs. We fixed an issue that was causing the attribute perk mods to not be usable in crafting repair kits. We fixed an issue that was causing using repair kits to cost coins. Repair kits should only cost coin in the process of being crafted. Okay, fixing repair kits uh, so that they're actually like serving a purpose is amazing. Economy exploits and coin farming. Coin and item dupes, they talked about how they, they saw all of these issues. Um, they're trying to mitigate it. They obviously have been banning people that have been coin duping and item duping. They've permanently banned players who've exploited them. Banned and suspended many of the reported accounts, as well as bot accounts that were holding gold. Thank you for your reports for player spamming chat. Added restrictions to prevent player-to-player -player trading and currency transfer from characters under level 10 or whose account is less than 72 hours old. Logging in after your account is 72 hours old will enable your ability to trade and transfer currency once you hit level 10. So they have to be both level 10 and older than three days before they can talk and chat. They also had in the patch notes for 1.0.5 that they made the low level rewards for gold for doing whatever the missions are at the very, very beginning for the newbie stuff. They also made that worse. There's less of a gold reward for those missions and a higher gold reward for the missions that come after level 10. Trading post usage will be restricted until new characters accept the introduction to trading post quests in their first settlement. Amazing. All right, so that should cut down on the gold spam a little bit. Probably, it probably won't stop it. They'll probably just have people like level to 10 and then they'll end up laddering out characters that last longer than three days. But even still, that should slow them down. Outpost rush. In a live environment at scale, we identified a rare issue that places players into limbo where they are neither in the world or in an outpost rush section or session. Solving this character state is very manual and time consuming. We have not been able to reproduce the issue in internal testing. We are working on solutions to prevent the issue, but it hasn't been an easy fix. We did a cautious rollout to monitor issues that appear. If you have an issue with the UI appearing improperly during outpost rush, you can do a hard restart to resolve the issue permanently. If your character gets immobilized or stuck between the world and outpost rush, please submit a ticket to get unstuck. So it's a manual fix in order to get somebody that gets stuck, like spawns dead, respawns dead. So they have to submit a ticket and a GM actually has to like fix their, their character state. That's crazy. Okay, client-side authority. Now there have been a lot of things that we have talked about and others have talked about about client-side authority and how there's handshaking going on. And again, there was dev blog posts that were talking about New World not being client authoritative and how everything is simulated on the server. We did have a bug in which, given certain circumstances, we were waiting server-side on input from a client before processing through to outcomes. Combined with an intentional weapon effect that allows for brief invulnerability, this created a situation where players could reach an invulnerable state and prolong it by making the client unresponsive, even though the client has no, no say in damage, both damage the player creates and damage taken by the player are computed server-side based on the results of physics simulation plus game rules. This was a particularly bad bug given our server-based simulation, and we apologize for that. We corrected the bug in code the same day we learned about it, then tested to make sure no unintended, nothing unintended came out of those changes and published the fix immediately after that. So this doesn't really address the uh, I can hold myself in midair thing, but I digress. It is important to us that New World be a fun, inclusive, and safe place for everyone in our community. We have seen several issues arise regarding in-game moderation that we want to address. First, we do enforce our code of conduct. Players report violations they see in-game. Those reports go to a queue to be reviewed by our moderation team. No player reports are moderated without a person reviewing the details of our report. 
Our team can make mistakes, and we are continuing to train up our growing army of moderators. Okay, moderation can and has been weaponized as a warfare tactic. The pattern of behavior is that two rival groups will have confrontations in chat prior to a war or big fight. These groups try to goad one another into code of conduct violations and then eagerly report one another when violations occur. Those violations receive multiple reports, reviewed by a moderator, and if there is a legitimate violation, then suspensions are issued. Again, these suspensions are not driven by the volume of reports, but the legitimacy of the violation. We also take advantage of automated systems such as easy anti-cheat to detect and remove folks who are using cheats and exploits. This process is data-driven and automated. So the reports are not automated, and it's not about mass reporting. It's about whether or not people are talking shit. So stop talking shit, and you won't get, you won't get time ban. War lag. So I can say 1.0.5 introduced something that they did that the lag is vastly improved in war like crazily improved in war war is a critical feature of new world other systems in the game benefit from claiming and holding territories war also creates fun and dramatic gameplay we've been tracking all the feedback and players are bringing things to our attention but the elephant in the room is the exploits that have been plaguing this feature in particular the now common practice of spamming the ice gauntlet fire staff and life staff in order to create latency problems while capturing control points We've made some initial changes here that were achievable in short development cycles and are working on further updates with higher impact that need longer testing to preserve balance. However, the 1.0.5 fix, like I said, that they implemented, whatever they did, has made war lag significantly better. However, we're going to still obviously need to monitor it, but I digress. War is a focal point of New World, and your feedback on its design and gameplay is important to us. We will continue to explore War's design in an upcoming dev blog. Invasion difficulty and participation. The higher your territory level, the more downgrades you will incur if you fail. We knew that. Individually, you'll be more likely to get better rewards the more you contribute to your team. So contribute to your fort's defense and make sure you're giving the corrupted all you've got. So there is something that is monitoring participation in this. So you can't just sit there AFK and collect your box. We've seen two sides to an argument in invasion participation. On one hand, governing companies want to determine 100% of the participants defending against an invasion. And on the other hand, players being removed from invasions feel like it's abuse of an existing game mechanic to exclude more players from joining. We understand both perspectives, and the team is investigating solutions, which probably means that there isn't much they can do about this. All right, patch schedule and downtimes. Our goal is to deliver weekly patches in addition to our major releases that address bugs, balance, and more. Patches and releases require server downtime. Yep. Uh, we understand this is a frustrating experience and can create the impression that we favor some regions over others. We've been listening to the community feedback and have been testing a few different time slots to determine the least amount of players affected. When possible, we also do maintenances that go region by region at the respective lowest usage, but this isn't always available for large updates. To ensure that you remain informed, we'll provide updates every Tuesday on the status of our weekly patch. We do understand that these downtimes may not be opportune for everyone, but we'll continue to listen to your feedback, etc., etc. How does luck work? Now, if only there was a video by somebody in the community that would have explained this already. Recently, we've received a lot of questions about how luck works in New World. Luck of the general type affects your chances to roll higher on our list of items that come from enemies and containers like stockpiles. The more rare the item, the more general luck you need if you're trying to get it. It works just like loot tables on gathering luck. Fishing chests. Due to an issue with botting, we have removed the amount of gold you receive in fishing chests. Yeah, that was something they did a while ago. We understand the impact this has on the incentives and rewards for fishing and will continue to explore opportunities to make fishing a rewarding experience for our players. Didn't really say anything about getting rid of the fishing bots, though. Perks and gems. There are currently many issues with how perks and gems are functioning. Like, they're not. For example, the resilient perk is granting damage absorption instead of critical damage absorption, which, again, was fixed in 1.0.5. Nice job. The team is looking into this situation as this is not intended behavior when we have to... When we have a fix for it, we'll be adding it to one of our weekly updates, which you just did. Our goal is to have all issues and perks solved by our November monthly release. 250 strength bug. There is currently an issue where once your strength attribute reaches 250, you can no longer roll. This is a bug, and the team is working to address it. Thank God. Property taxes. Property taxes are high, and the rate of payment is high. This is by design. Now, again, they're making it seven days instead of five, but okay. Faction tokens. Faction tokens have been a source of pain for players, and we recently improved the situation by addressing that, and they made the token cap 50% higher. However, people were still bugged. Hopefully, they fix that now. World clock bug. We implemented a mitigation to prevent world time to skip ahead or behind for most worlds, which would subsequently cause a variety of issues across the world. We're unable to replicate this issue internally and is taking longer to fully address than what we would like. So I guess there's still worlds that are jumping ahead or jumping back in time. Uh, they, they fixed the images in chat. Issue, the crouching bug. Crouching produces a healing effect, and if on sacred ground, you could increase the healing effect by crouching. Yeah, they fixed that in like a day. The watermark system. Okay, 
Let's go and talk about watermarks. When you reach the level cap, this mechanic changes a bit. At 60, you gain an upper gear score limit on drops that gradually increase as more powerful drops appear for you. This upper limit is item-based, per item type. For armor, it's based on the slot type, head armor, chest armor, ring, etc. For weapons, it's based on the weapon, sword, hammer, musket, etc. Only item drops affect your high watermark. The moment the item drops, your relevant high watermark is increased. You don't even need to pick the item up. So once the bag is on the ground, it counts. Crafting an item or buying one from the trading post will not give you an increase, but can be a great way to give yourself an edge in search of more powerful gear in the more dangerous areas of the game. Not all enemies and containers, including invent reward containers from outpost rush war invasions, are created equal in the case of high watermark systems. While you always have a small chance to see a high watermark increase when defeating a level 60 plus creature or searching a container in a level 60 plus landmark, each level beyond 60 has a soft upper limit on the likelihood of a high watermark increase. Event reward containers will respect your current high watermark and also have a small chance of increasing it. What this means is while you'll reliably see high watermark increases up to gear score 530 when defeating level 61 enemies, your chances of seeing something beyond 530 from a level 61 enemy is significantly lower than it is from a level 62. Level 64 plus are capable of reliably dropping gear up to GS 600. So you want to be fighting 64 plus mobs in order to be able to see those high watermark increases. The system isn't fully random. Each time you defeat a level 60 plus enemy and don't receive a gear item that increases its high watermark type, you're slightly more likely to see an increase the next time. Additionally, some enemies such as those found in elite landmarks and expeditions have a higher base chance of dropping items that increase your high watermark. Level 60 plus named enemies are even more likely to drop high watermark increased items and expedition bosses will always drop an item that increases your high watermark. Some of you feel that competing for drops from powerful enemies in the open world is suboptimal in crowded areas, and you're right. When lots of disparate groups are all attacking the same enemy, there is a smaller chance that these groups will see drops. If you want to maximize your chances of getting high watermark increases in more controlled environments, expeditions are a great way to do it. Garden of Genesis and Lazarus, Instrumentality, etc., etc., etc. We know that tuning orbs for those expeditions are particularly time-consuming to craft right now, so we're in the process of adjusting expedition tuning orb crafting requirements. Oh my gosh, thank you. We expect to release an update to this crafting requirements for tuning orbs sometime in November after we've vetted the changes, so keep an eye on the update notes. We also heard your feedback on the high watermark system and are tracking and fixing some issues the final stages which they did so they they and they they fixed the the issue where people weren't getting gs 600 drops so amazing amazing this is stuff that we have needed since the first week when all of this stuff had most of this stuff had been known because it's been known a lot of this has been issues that we have talked about since the beta days now the high watermark system was something that really couldn't have been tested until you had people actually generating high watermark items and realized that there were cutoffs and stuff but this this is what the community needs. As long as developers are transparent, communicative, actually list out stuff, have statements that get made like this, this is how you create a community that doesn't revolve around toxicity. This is what it takes. And I'm so, so very glad to see AGS actually taking steps in the right direction. Thank you, guys. Seriously, thank you. You've needed to do this for a long time. I know it's a long time coming. I don't want to be like, well, it's about damn time. Thank you for finally addressing all of this stuff and, and letting us know that you're working on this and that you're planning on fixing like these calculations and stuff. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, and I'm glad that this is happening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, that's what I have for this one. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.